Hello everyone, I'm here with Shiba Mora Prime of SilasZ.com. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well, thank you, internet celebrity evangelist. That's not my name. It's not? No. No? What? What's your name? Well, it's, 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 it's Chris. It's just... Hey, hey Chris. Chris. Hey. Hey, Chris, what's going on? Oh, not much. I'm just wondering how BotCon's going for you here as an artist. BotCon's going great. I've sold out a lot of Prince people really want art this year. I don't know why, but it's good for me. Excellent. We're doing good. Have you been doing many sketches? Oh, my hand's about to fall off. I've been doing like crazy mad sketches, man. Oh, man. It's, been, it's really good. Pe people out here, they're great. They pretend to like my art, which is fine. That strokes my ego. Oh, your art's lovely. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's quite lovely. Like, I'm, I'm filming you right now, and you've got just thighs right next to your I head. Have thighs. Do you want to see more thighs? I don't oh. know if you want to see more of me. Nah, let's keep looking at you. All right. Uh oh. Oh. There we go. Who's this? This is this is Colin of SuperMegatron.com fame. Wow, wow. I've never met him before. Super. Is he helping you sell pictures? No, he's actually deterring people. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, it's, it's quite the drag. It's quite the drag. Oh, that's a bummer. It is a bummer. I uh, tell people, they don't want to buy this stuff. Come on, look at this stuff. Do you really need I'm this? Paying him no. To do this. Paying him to do this. Well, I think it looks quite lovely. Well, I think it's working. My, my uh, strategy is working well, because if you notice over here, the large prints have sold out. <laughs> Crossed out. Yeah, I take credit for that. For that. Did, did he really do that? Did he really sell them out himself? No, he did not sell them out himself. Did he just draw on your sign to make people think there's no more large prints left? He just likes drawing on everything else. He'll, uh, I'll leave the table and he'll start drawing things saying he's me. And it's, I don't know. Uh, so how does it feel being Asian like Pat Lee? It feels good. I like having other people do my work. It's great. It's it's like, you know, little Silas art sweatshop. But I like Pat Lee. We have the, the same amount of letters in our last name. And they both end with E. That's very true. It is true. Like I look up here. Yeah. It says SilasZ.com. And then I don't know if there's a Pat Lee.com, but I'm pretty sure he ripped it off of me there if was there a is. PatLeeArt.com and it uh got cancelled for some reason uh, in 2004. I don't know why that was. I don't know either. He was a good guy. He was a good guy. I would like him to, I would like to hire him like to hire someone so else to draw something. Art behind your head. I know, I do. I do. Of my favorite Ultra Magnus character. Ultra Magnus. He's got a big hand. He's got a big head. He does have a big head. Oh, oh, hand. 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 Sorry, it's my accent. I'm Asian. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, uh, yes. It's because, it's because he's from Africa. That's, that's the hand that he uses all the time to fight with. All right. He has a very small head. Hang on, I think you have a customer here. Excuse me, sir. Are you here to purchase some of Silas Z's original artwork? Who's Silas Z? He's uh, he's like Pat Lee. He's Asian. Oh. All, all Asians, don't you know, they all draw the same. Yeah. Do they all drive Porsches too? Do you have yeah. a Porsche? I do have a Porsche. And a but I'm only leasing it, so you know, you can't <laughs> yell at me. I'm only, I'm only leasing my Porsche. I own my Ferrari, but I, I only <laughs> lease my Porsche. And I'm driving around because it's, a, it's the, the Dream Have car. That's my company. So, <laughs> so would you say that drawing has brought you millions? Millions, baby. Millions. Well, I think this has been a truly inspirational interview yeah, with a pillar of the Asian community. And uh, thank you very much for your time, Mr. Shamad Bamora Prime. I like your shirt. He got it the first time. I like which shirt? This one? Oh, what's that? Where can I get a great shirt like where, that? Where are you going this year? This is, I'm going to TFCon. It's in Mexico? I don't want to go to Mexico. I don't want to go to Mexico either. It would be much better if it was in Canada on the 27th through 29th of July. Hey, wait a second. Do you think we could contact the people who run that show and get them to change it to the, t the 27th to 29th of July 2012, perhaps in Toronto, Canada? I think it's possible. I think it's possible if, you know, the showrunner isn't some bald jerk. 
We gotta get on that. We gotta get on that. Like physically and literally. I hate bald people. I hate bald people too. They're very mean, especially when they have the weird like they can't what do you call this? Soul patch. Soul patch. Oh, it's a chin strip. It's the technical term. A soul patch is just the little part. The chin strip is all the way down. And Can I have that's Encyclopedia that's, Dramatica? That's the indication of a large penis. Authenticate that for me. Can I have the Encyclopedia Dramatica entry for that, please? I need authenticity for chin strips, straps. I think we'll find it for you at some point, sir. I think you should. But uh, until then, thank you for your time and have a good show, uh, SilasZ.com. Thank, thank you, Chris, and thank you. Oh, this is the this is concept art for, concept art for 2013 TFCon exclusive. Nemesis Wheelie. He has an eye patch. He's missing a tooth. That one's shining because it's gold. He has a pipe and a parrot with a robo peg leg, an antenna because he's a robot, and a minigun. Hey Silas. Hey Al. How you doing? Oh my god. Oh Even god. international people like my art. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> it's actually currency in our country. He's from Brazil. <laughs> oh, I don't talk to Brazilians. This interview's over. So I'm here with uh, two gentlemen from some podcast called Pre-Order 66, and uh, I'm just curious, like, what's it like being one of the preeminent podcasts to come out of the New York State area about high-end toys? You mean the only podcast to come out about high-end toys? We are pillars. Pillars. We've been told. That's kind of egotistical to just come out and say, <laughs> well, you know, our podcast, which has not yet even reached 30 episodes, is pretty much a pillar. We, we, next week is our year anniversary. Yeah, no, seriously. It's kind of crazy. We started recording exactly a year ago. What do you say? <laughs> yep. Well, that's really impressive. <laughs> uh, I'm curious what kind of plans you've got to celebrate your one-year anniversary of Pre-Order 66, a podcast about high-end toys. A, a website launching. Yes. And a website really? that has actually been created. So just needs to be kind of coded of, put together. A lot of Toyota Satsu content. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks for that. Putting me on the spot. We have plans. We have. We actually do have some interesting stuff planned. My question is, because uh, I have done this myself, are you the kind of dudes... I'm going to just pretend you have something to do with the website. I'm the one. Oh, man. <laughs> are you the kind of dudes who will design a website and then destroy it, then design it again, and then destroy it, then design it again without ever actually putting it up because you don't feel it's perfect? It's more along the lines that I'm a print designer, so that's what I do for my day job. So I'll, usually when I get an assignment like this from a company, I will skin something in Photoshop to say, this is how I'd like it to work. Because when it comes to coding, that's not my forte. So that's what I did here. I made it beautiful, and now it's up to our web designer to make it functional. Who's your web designer? Somebody. Somebody. <laughs> Have you ever designed a website before? It's not me. <laughs> Why not? because I have not designed a website before. But you're, you're taller than he is. It's true. And I'm also younger, so he's shrinking. <laughs> and my other question is, uh, where, where, where are your other co-hosts? Where are your other regulars? We you really think you. Jack Sack would pay for a plane ticket? Seriously? I thought you'd pay for his plane ticket. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Don't you want full coverage? No, not really. I mean, this, all right, here's the Jack Sack rundown of BotCon. Fun pub sucks. Fuck this. All right, I'm out. Give me some bourbon. There you go. That's. But that's all we do is drink bourbon. <laughs> well, I heard also a rumor that you two in particular were engaged in some pretty, like, f like just absolute fallacious drinking last night. Like really, just nasty stuff. You guys were knocking back, shot after shot, screaming outside, gesticulating wildly. Now I went to bed last night at 8 p.m. and had a warm glass of milk, and I didn't know about any of this. But I hear that you guys were basically making all of us look like a bunch of loud, drunken louts. What do you have to say to these allegations I'm making? Represent New York. Vicious rumors, vicious rumors. He's lying, I'm telling the truth. I was so drunk. God. Well, one last question uh, before I say people should check out your podcast because it's pretty cool and it's about high-end toys and it's fun. Uh, and that would be, how do you like your pizza? No slices. 
I actually, uh, you know, I, I like a good, good, a lot of, a lot of mozzarella, a little bit of sauce, not too burnt crust. Is it true that you own a pizzeria in New York that does not offer slices, that has overpriced, complete trash ranch sauce, and calzones that feel like uh, 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 some kind of deep fried pig fetus? But you get chicken really early if you order there. Two hours early, was it? I can't remember anymore. Yeah, it was almost like two hours early. Uh, I, I do own this establishment, and uh, I make a lot of money off of it. Well, hopefully someday justice can be mediated out against villains like you. Uh, thank you both for the interview, and I hope you enjoy your BotCon. Um, you know, not as much as I will, because, you know, I'm, I'm doing Transformers-related things here, not not 3A related things or, or whatever. We have one we thing talk to talk about. about. No, two things, because there's a, a Bumblebee statue, too. That looks like crap. Yep. You're, you're going to talk about a Bumblebee statue. There's a Bumblebee statue from Caliber Toys. And we a can new talk company. about Superion Arm. Yeah, we could. We could. But MP10, now with the official Hasbro Masterpiece Optimus Prime, with trailer. Is something we could talk about that was announced today. I don't think the camera believes you. I... All right, I am here with, I'm gonna get this right, Kali Kari Shoka. Close enough, of course. Excellent. Of Puggle Formers and Kali's Critters and really cool plush thingies. The last two left? The last two left. All right, that means you can really quickly answer my first question, which is I saw photos of the lineup that you had on day one. How has business been as an artist here at BotCon this year? I'm going to go with it very well. <laughs> Pretty well, pretty well? Pretty well, pretty well. I, I saw a lineup uh, on one Derek Wyatt's phone that seemed to eclipse any lineup that I saw outside of registration lineups. Now, uh, were you expecting this kind of turnout for your work? No, no, I'm still a little bit in shock about the whole thing. In a couple of days, I'll realize that this, well, this entire weekend actually happened, but right now, I'm kind of just, just taking it. Awesome. Um, can you tell me a little bit just about how you came up with the idea of doing these uh, Puggle Former pieces? Um, I actually started doing them just as plain little round critter things called Puff Puggles. And then one of my friends asked me to make one to look like Blur from Transformers Animated. And from there, just kind of steamrolls, more people ask for more and more stuff with more complicated bits added onto it and just kind of went from there. Just kind of riding the wave of the Puggle Former Madness right now. Uh, have you thought about uh, taking things to any kind of next level, like larger items or maybe like new shapes or something like that, or, uh, or just something to mix it up? I don't even know what the next level is right now. Um, I'm kind of playing everything right here, kind of, because I, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I have um, no idea what I'm doing. Are, are you considering going to any other shows to uh, showcase your work or sell some stuff? Um, I try to keep myself to one convention a year, because I was working on the stack from here since December. And it was gone within just a few hours, so... It must have felt worth it, though. Oh, yeah, when you see a line going way past to the pillars back there, it's kind of like, whoa! Holy crap! Things are happening! Um, and just one other question. Uh, for folks who want to see your work or perhaps try to get a commission from you uh, online, what is a place to visit? Um, I have a DeviantArt account. Um, same name as everywhere else. Kelly Kelly Show at DeviantArt.com. And I have an Etsy shop, but it's empty 90% of the time. I warn people on Twitter, again, the same name on Twitter, when shop deals are coming. So, yes. So follow you on Twitter, keep an eye on your DeviantArt, and uh, just try to see when you have openings? Pretty much. I have a commission lottery. It runs my lottery system now every other month, because I require time for my little tiny weak fingers to rest. So every other month, the next one's actually in a couple days from now, right after BotCon, which I planned very poorly in hindsight. So, Yes, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks very much for your time, and I'm really happy your work oh. turned out great here because uh, I like the style of it, so it's, it's cool stuff to see. Thank you very much. All right, have a good rest of the show. You too. All right, I am here with uh, Mr. Matt Teeger of uh, War... High Moon Studios. I'm in studios. I was about to say the game name. Oh, oh but sorry. It's all right. It's been a long day. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's been a long day for me too. I've been in the panel room for like forever. Okay. <laughs> Pretty all much. Right. All right. Yeah. All right. You are here to talk about uh, Fall of Cybertron, which is the upcoming game coming out uh, at the end of August this year. 
and uh, I'm really excited about it because I love the work you guys did on War for Cybertron, and uh, we actually had a, we had a great podcast interview about that back in 2009, I believe. In Florida. Back in Florida, yes. Yeah. And uh, it was a it was a really cool game to see because it, it had I think I told you this before it had it had gotten away from the stereotype of Transformers video games, which is that they generally are kind of crappy. Uh, and then War for Cybertron showed up and pretty much changed the scope of things. Uh, now we've heard you uh, in a lot of interviews and a lot of um, recorded media talking about some of the improvements made in Fall of Cybertron. But uh, is, like, getting some fan reactions here at BotCon, have you found that uh, people are really in tune with any particular thing? This is one of my favorite places to ever talk about the game, right? I mean, I'm talking to the most passionate Transformers fans of, in the world, right? So it's great to be here and show off and, and give them content that I don't show to other people or, or explain things to them in a way that I wouldn't normally. Mm -hmm. um, and I really, frankly, really enjoy that. So today we were showing off some content that has never been shown to the public before. And it was just, it's, it's the reactions of the people as they cheer and they hoot and they holler. It's just, it's, it's, it's overwhelming to me. It, it just feels amazing. Yeah, it always kind of feels like, um, like when I watch you doing interviews with uh, the video game journalism industry, it's almost like there's almost a slightly different tone because a lot of those guys are not as into Transformers. So you kind of have to break it down for them a bit differently. Like, I've really enjoyed the, the kind of breakdown about Grimlock. It's kind of like, well, he's a space T-Rex yeah. who is a robot. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, um, you know, one of the things I, I, I definitely read a lot of forum posts and stuff, and I know I've seen some, some people post how they, they really are tired of me using the phrase space T-Rex. Like, I, I, I get it, right? But the, the, the thing you have to realize is the people that are the hardcore Transformers fans are, are reading everything that comes out about this game because they're so interested in it. And, and I can understand how they would get tired of using that phrase, right? But that phrase is actually kind of geared to grab people who wouldn't necessarily call themselves Transformers fans or be Transformer curious, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think there's, there's, there's a, good, that's a good phrase for actually grabbing people and, and kind of bringing them into Transformers. Because actually that's kind of my goal is to make more Transformers fans. I don't think that's a bad thing at all. Yeah. No, I mean, I've seen some great reactions on, like, I follow Giant Bomb quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, they checked out their um, comment section on the recent Alpha Build uh, video about Grimlock. Uh, just uh -huh. kind of showing them with the Insecticons. And it was really nice to watch, because there were a lot of people going like, oh, hey, it's Grimlock, or hey, the gameplay on this is looking pretty fun. And, like, I, I know that video game uh, commenters can be a very, very jaded bunch. And to see the positivity for uh, a video game sequel, of all yeah. things, is uh, fantastic to see. And for a license, right? You know, licenses, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, do not have the best history when it comes to people who would call themselves more gamer than Transformers fan, right? And so um, it, it's been kind of my mission statement to kind of start to change that philosophy. Batman's done an amazing job of kind of changing oh, yeah. people's perceptions of what a license game could and should be. And um, I think we're in the same vein. I, I feel like we're in the same vein of, of really bringing an amazing license to people who are kind of like not into licenses, you know, I, I think that Transformers is such a huge brand with such a giant following that has decades of history. I think we're actually going to create some Transformers fans in this game. Absolutely. I've, I've seen people talk about their love of just this aesthetic itself. So uh, I think you're really, you're doing some good work on, on accomplishing that goal. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how this game turns out because, I mean, you guys have gotten a lot more than three or four toys out of it this time around as well. Yeah, so. that's pretty exciting to see, and, and you know, Hasbro revealed some stuff that I hadn't even seen before lately, and that, and that's for a big Transformers fan. That's that's exciting for me too. You know, I I love it. I'm super thrilled. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks very much for your time, and uh, we'll also be recording a quick podcast with you hopefully sometime tomorrow. So uh, until then, thanks very much, and I uh, hope you have a good BotCon. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right, we are here with one awesome dude in a cowboy hat. <laughs> Named Clint Chapman, uh, how is BotCon going for you? Absolutely fantastic. It's uh, it's been a great experience this year. Fans are incredible. Um, we've uh, we just had a great time. We we really enjoyed the panel. We show, enjoyed uh, showing off some some new exclusives and uh, um, just getting a chance to interact with the uh, the fans and getting to know what they want. And uh, just it's uh, great to have this time with them. Yeah, the uh, the panel was was quite fun. Getting to see uh, some of the as always the design side of things with. Uh, like the designs of the small arachnid figure or the packaging for the SDCC stuff. Um, with, with SDCC coming up uh, and BotCon being always in close proximity to it, do you guys kind of find you, you try to tailor one uh, presentation for one show while one's a bit more broad for the other? Definitely. Um, you know, with, with this panel in particular, um, you know, I, 
I agonized over, over weeks on this because I really wanted to give um, the fans an inside look as to, you know, not only the, the products that we're developing, but how we go about doing things. And so, you know, the packaging uh, was an example of going through the exact process and, and uh, what are the decisions that had to be made and, and really trying to, trying to bring them into, um, you know, the, the Hasbro family and, and seeing what it's like uh, on a daily basis to work on the brand. Cool. Uh, now I had a couple questions just about a few of the things that did pop up here. Um, the first one being on the main the main Transformer side, uh, Bruticus. When we first heard about that, that was kind of huge because it's. Uh, I, I did the math. I think it's the first time you guys have done a combiner of that size with that many unique robots involved in almost ten years. And uh, was there uh, like was there a bit of uh, lead up to this? Did Powercore combiners perhaps uh, help test the waters for such a product, or is it kind of just jumping in and see if it'll work? You know. Um uh, our design team actually spent a lot of time working on the technology for how Bruticus uh, can combine. Um, in particular, the ability to have a figure that is poseable and movable, but also at that size actually uh, stands up and, and works together. And, um, and it was a, a big technical challenge that the, the team took on. And I think they did a phenomenal job, and um, you know, it's something that uh, they're continuing to learn about um, uh, how to uh, to use combination and transformation um, and posability uh, into figures. And so, uh, definitely look for more of that in the future. Awesome. Yeah, and I, I was very surprised and happy to see. It seems like those limbs can double up as arms or legs, so it's fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, just quickly moving into bot shots, uh, that's been in the fandom a bit of a runaway success and we aren't even really the target audience for it. Uh, have you guys been surprised by that at all or is it just kind of like a fun project that's, that's having some good returns? Uh, I guess we might have been a little bit surprised, but we definitely, um, you know, we, we looked at it from, from two perspectives. Um, you know, we wanted to have something that was, you know, fun gameplay, um, you know, really simple to get into and real fun transformation, but obviously we looked uh, across the uh, the lore and uh, you can definitely tell the sort of G1 inspired um, looks to a lot of these characters, um, you know, and it was our chance at a small scale to build out a huge line of a ton of characters um, that we don't always be able to, uh, to get into the sort of the deluxe size, um, but we love them. We think they're a ton of fun and uh, we're really excited to, to keep bot shots going and, and seeing what kind of uh, figures we can do in the future. Awesome, and then uh, just quickly jumping over to Creo. I know that's a separate team somewhat, but uh, they seem to have been really embracing getting to work on Transformer stuff with really lovingly made head sculpts, if anything else. Uh, has it been interesting seeing the IP basically become almost like a license for a building block toy in a way? Like, because they, they are, at the end of the day, they are a building block toy that are using Transformers IP, which is different than something we've seen before with building blocks. Uh, was, like, what, what kind of experience was that, seeing things move over to another team like that? Honestly, it's, it's incredibly exciting. Um, every time I see what these guys uh, are putting together, I'm just blown away. And, and uh, as you've probably seen, their uh, diorama that they put together, um, it's just, it's absolutely incredible. We love seeing it, and, uh, and every time we see them uh, put out something new, we get really excited about it. They, they just, the team does an amazing job. They love um, uh, Transformers as much as anyone else on any of the uh, other Transformers teams, so uh, it just, it's a pleasure and a joy working with them. Yeah, it feels like they put that diorama together almost to throw down the gauntlet. <laughs> hey, we can do it too. <laughs> yeah, we were more than a, than a little uh, surprise, and um, you know, we obviously uh, we spent a lot of time working on the uh, the Transformers diorama, and and we loved, it, and we really wanted to do something to sort of you know again give back to the fans and um, you know show off uh, some of the characters in some really fun poses and. Uh, when they wheeled in the the Creo diorama, uh, our jaws dropped, and uh, it's just it's amazing. It's it's a beautiful. It's really a piece of art, and, and uh, we loved it. So yeah, I'm I'm glad to see they got another wave coming. I was I admit I was very worried that Creo might have been a one wave experiment, but I'm glad to see it's all coming together. And uh, looking forward to next year's product. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys next year. Uh, thanks very much for your time, and uh, hope to see what you guys have at the SDCC. Thank you so much. It's been great, and uh, looking forward to see you at Comic Con. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'm gonna get you out. All right, I am invading the privacy of an artist at work. Uh, he's in the midst of drawing a thigh, but his name is Josh Perez. Dun 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 dun. Bum 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 bum. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. This is a very very fun show, and I'm really glad that it's over so I can actually sleep. That, that sounds like a great thing to do. I should try that myself. Um, has, uh, has the show been, been a good time for you? Have you, have you had some good uh, lucrative stuff? Have you sold out any prints? Am I leading you with a question, perhaps? 
Um, I have. Uh, I, I've done really well with print sales. Um, the prints that sold the best are the ones that had the least amount of time put into them. Um, primarily the Pizza Party print. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say that name as much as possible so that way the next BotCon people will ask for a Pizza Party print. I want the Pizza Party print. Yeah, it's, I want it to be a name. I want it to be a thing, a Pizza Party print. Excellent. And uh, is this just one of the, now I, I noticed actually you have this big ass list next to you. And yeah. that's commission sketch stuff going oh, on yeah. here? Um, yeah, it's uh, commission, commission sketch type things going on and stuff that it, it's. I think it's like eighteen, sixteen, something. Oh, let me cross this one out. Um, but yeah, it's it's about eighteen, something like that. Uh, it's from most of it's from last night, uh, and it's just stuff I didn't ever got to because busy and people buying me drinks was just that was not a good cohesive. Uh, productive state of mind to be in but it was fun to be in it uh did you ever try uh considering maybe waffle house to top all that off uh, why would i want waffle house when we have the wonder of Weatherburger here in texas are you gonna start a gang war now are you trying to start something between waffle house and Weatherburger? sorry whataburger what what what, 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 what i would like to that seems that seems like a fun thing to do Weatherburger versus waffle house it would be nothing but the heaviest sweatiest battle ever um, not unlike two melting slabs of putty slowly dying in an afternoon sun in Texas. I made no sense. That, that sounds kind of like a dig on one Mr. Greg Lombardo who may or may not be a silly putty super, superman right now. A silly putty superman. <laughs> well, super, pu super putty, su I can't even say that now. A super putty silly man. A super putty silly man. <laughs> Well, uh, Super Putty Silly Man is a fun thing. It's a fun thing. A Super Putty Silly Man with the Bumblebee Mobile Blah, blah, blah. I can't even. I'm not going to do that. Oh, man. That I almost had it, and then I failed. Of all the times I have successfully said Bumblebee's Mobile Battle Bunker, I have to fail it right there. Mobile Battle Bunker. Mobile Battle Bunker. Mobile Battle Bunker. Mobile Battle Bunker. Mobile Battle Bunker Super Silly Man. Mobile Battle Bunker Super Silly Man. Mobile Battle Bunker Super Silly Man. Oh, God damn it. We okay. were doing so well. <laughs> Well, that seems like a good cue to uh, to stop uh, distracting you from your hard work here. Um, although I will say, I think we're being monitored uh, from above. Oh no! It's God Dog. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> that face. Oh God, is he gonna do it? <laughs> I like how he's a blur and you're not. <laughs> so, so what are you guys doing after this?